Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another RF crypto video. So in the last 24 hours, the global crypto market cap fell by about 5% and the crypto market cap is below $1 trillion after such a long time. Remember that a few weeks ago, it was around 800 billion and then it made its way up to 1.1 trillion and it stayed above the $1 trillion level for a while. But because of the news that the Fed is going to increase interest rates by a massive amount, by 75 basis points, the markets reacted swiftly by selling off their crypto assets, which are inherently risky in order to move that money into safer assets like stocks, bonds, and commodities such as gold. As you can see, Bitcoin is down 4% in the last 24 hours. Ethereum knocked out a massive 7%. BNB 5%. So the entire market is down, as you can see. If we scroll down to the top 50 coins, we don't see a single positive result. So the whole crypto market cap has reacted to the Fed's two day meeting. It started today, and the expectation that they'll increase interest rates by almost a percentage point. So that has already been priced in. So when the actual news comes out that the Fed has raised interest rates, it won't affect the price of cryptocurrencies that much and we will see it quite stable maybe we'll see a percentage point at max but at the moment it has already been priced in so we can't expect massive movements after the news will break out and looking at the chart we see that it is below the twenty two thousand uh, dollar now resistance level and now it's trading between 20 and twenty two thousand it's currently at a sort of mini mid-range support level of twenty one thousand trading over it the bears are trying to push it down but then the bulls are getting in and not allowing it to go below 21,000 so 21,000 is another psychological support level it's not a real support level because we haven't seen it being traded much around this level but when we see absolute numbers like 20,000 21,000 22 23 we see the markets reacting by not wanting to let the prices oscillate away from this level too much and in the next few days, we might see the prices shoot up again, trading at between 22 and 23,000 or even a little bit above that because the trend has been set off above the $22,000 level. So as we talked about before, crypto markets dip ahead of upcoming Fed meeting. The Federal Reserve is expected to increase its benchmark interest rates by 0.75%, which is the largest hike in nearly 30 years. The Fed officials have already upped benchmark short-term borrowing rates by 1.5% this year alone, and we're only halfway through the year, including a 0.75% or 75 basis points increase in June, which again is the largest increase in three decades. So how does interest rates relate to crypto? Firstly, the move which the Fed considers the main weapon to curb growing inflation we'll see the interest rate increase to a target range of between 2.25 and 2.5%. Remember that during the pandemic, it was close to 0% or even at 0%, which means that credit was cheap. So when the federal fund rates go up, the impact is on the entire economy. Adjustable rate mortgages, home equity lines of credit, credit cards, student debt, saving deposits, and other loans. So any real type of debt become more expensive because the interest rate is the cost of debt. So the interest rate is what you're going to pay on interest over what you have borrowed. So the idea of increasing interest rates is that borrowing will become less accessible because borrowing will become more expensive. When something becomes more expensive, there is less demand for it. And this causes it to dampen consumer demand due to the fact that less money will be borrowed and that means that less money will flow in the market. When consumer demand is dampened, there is a negative pressure on prices because the supply remains the same, but demand decreases, which means that the prices go down or at least the rate of increase of the prices decreases. However, interestingly, US inflation has actually accelerated since the Fed began raising rates in March. And I mean, this is basically due to the fact that a lot of people are less willing to work for lower wages that are currently plaguing the market because you have a very high rate of inflation, but the wage increase is very little. So in real terms, people are actually getting less bang for their buck and they want higher wages. So this causes a price wage inflation whereby 
prices increase, cost of living becomes more expensive, people demand higher wages. Because there is a lot of demand for jobs in the market, the employers will give higher wages, which causes the price to increase again because all that increase in wage gets priced into their products, which causes the cycle to begin again. And this has caused a runaway effect, which has led to a 9.1% inflation rate in the United States. So interest rate hikes could also play out on stocks, cryptocurrencies, and other risky investments while bringing risks of a decrease in capital inflows and ultimately a decline in economic growth. So if the Fed increases interest rates, there is less money in the market because borrowing money becomes more expensive. And when that happens, there is less investment in cryptocurrencies and stocks, which causes its price to stabilize, not increase too much, which leads to lower demand and that causes the rate of inflation to go down. So Binance CEO CZ sues Bloomberg Business Week for defamation in Hong Kong. So he is suing the Chinese edition of Bloomberg for its version of the Bloomberg US article, Can Crypto's Richest Man Stand the Cold? He has seek damages because the Chinese edition of this article wrote in a print and online a phrase which translates to Zhao Changpeng's Ponzi scheme, which is a very, very harsh uh, phrase to say about one of the richest men and most well-respected men in the crypto space. Zhao is also suing the publication for reusing that phrase twice more in corresponding Twitter and Facebook posts promoting that profile story about him. And Binance representatives, just to be clear, said that this has nothing to do with the company. It's a personal lawsuit. Also, Zhao's legal counsel made up of best lawyers, imaginable due to the amount of money this man has, alleged that the original English language version of the article also contained defamatory and sensationalist statements. The New York documents argued that the original article contained several serious and defamatory allegations made against Zhao and Binance that were completely unsubstantiated and were obviously sort of like a news piece designed to mislead readers into believing that Zhao and Binance have been engaging in illegal or unsavory activities. So the Bloomberg publishing states that at Binance the sketchiness has a certain completeness to it and that Binance is a massive S-coin casino, which obviously are defamatory. You can't just say these things about the richest man and the most well-respected man in the crypto space. It just doesn't go right, especially due to the fact that Binance is one of the most or even the most used crypto exchange in the world. And this isn't the first time that Zhao has sued a media outlet for defamation. Back in 2020, Zhao filed a complaint against Forbes in the US and he sued Forbes and the two reporters because the article claimed that Binance had an elaborate corporate structure designed to intentionally deceive regulators and surreptitiously profit from crypto investors in the United States. Obviously, Zhao later dropped that lawsuit, but it was a sign to the media outlets that they just can't write whatever they want. It's sensationalist, it's defamatory, and it has no basis. And if we look at it, there is no real proof that um, there is an elaborate structure to deceive regulators in the US by Binance. And obviously, they need to be accountable for their actions. And let's see how this defamation lawsuit in Hong Kong and by extend the United States will play out. It's interesting to see very powerful people are always, always targeted for defamation. And a lot of the times they just let it through. But this man seems to want to go on the legal route and wants to seek damages. And obviously this isn't about the money because he doesn't need it. It's about the fact that they must be accountable for their actions and in future other news outlets will think twice before posting something defamatory about CZ. Obviously, if they have proof, go ahead. But if it's just sensationalist, then obviously they shouldn't do it. On some Tesla and Elon Musk news, uh, Tesla still holds $222 million in digital assets after dumping $936 million in Bitcoin. So remember that Tesla announced that it would sell 75% of its Bitcoin, but the company still holds about $222 million or 25% of digital assets and a lot of people were thinking that Tesla wants to divest from Bitcoin and Elon Musk doesn't believe in crypto anymore but if they hold almost 300 million in digital assets it means that they still believe it if they didn't believe in it and if Elon Musk specifically didn't believe in it 
then Tesla would have sold 100% of their Bitcoin holdings, but they only sold 75%. The main reason why they sold 75% of their crypto assets is to free up cash as COVID lockdowns continue in China. They want to have a certain buffer uh, in order to continue operations in China because they don't know when the COVID lockdowns will end. And Tesla shareholders seem to be a little bit against Bitcoin or not so favorable to Bitcoin because when Tesla sold 75% of its Bitcoin holdings, the Tesla share price went up by 9%. And with that, we come to the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and share this video with your family and friends. Invest wisely and cheers.